probably everyone listening has their own specific data wrangling problems, and I'll I'll, I'll talk specifically about what it means here, um, and and I'll I'll take it back to a the Library of Congress's oldest data wrangling problem in. 1814, during the badly named War of 1812, the Library of Congress collections were burned, and the library purchased uh, 6,500 or so books from Thomas Jefferson. Over the course of many years, uh, with an intervening lost bill of sale, an intervening um, several fires that happened subsequent to that purchase, restoring that collection became a matter of archaeology. And the goal here of data wrangling, even in the days before we were doing it with hard drives and bits and bytes, was to make it so that we don't need to do archaeology in order to get back what we had. We don't have to go back to a previous source. We don't have to go back to, you know, in the case of the the newspaper program, we don't have to go back to film or paper if that's where it came from, but that we can have high-fidelity copies of the files that we got in the beginning. And so all of our data wrangling is sort of centered around that. And I would imagine that that's exactly the same for everyone who's participating, that not losing something that's important is the heart of of all of the data wrangling. Over the course of the seven years that I've been part of this program, the way that we do that has evolved somewhat. But there's a few constants that have translated all the way through that. I would say, you know, constant number one is that we have learned to keep a physical bill with physical items and to keep a digital bill with a digital manifest with digital items. So always at the Library of Congress, we keep a a digital manifest with the items. You don't have to go looking for it. It's not stored in a database somewhere. It's in a file on disk where all of the other files are on disk. If all of our systems went away, every single one, we could still use that where we could salvage the hard drives. And we could look at it and we could say, oh, on this hard drive are supposed to be these files. And then the second thing is that with that digital manifest is what essentially is a a sort of manifest inside a manifest of the files themselves, a, a checksum. You know, since we're not worried about cryptographic security here, we're not worried about a file being maliciously changed. We use generally uh, an MD5 checksum. In other programs uh, at at the library, an MD5 checksum is not sufficient, so we might use a a SHA-256 or a SHA-512. But but roughly speaking, what we have there is we have a list of the files that should be here, and then we have a checksum that lets us know what should be inside the file. Not in an intellectual sense, just lets us know the order of the bytes. It says you know, one zero, one zero, one zero, that kind of thing. And so I would say the heart and soul of of data wrangling here, even with all of the systems that we've added on top of it, is keeping track of files on a file system and keeping track of what's inside of those files. But that's bedrock. The term backups is is one that is oriented around business data more than it is around curatorial data. So we borrowed that term from from business and we say backups when what we really mean is additional copies. And that's an important distinction between what we do at a library and what a business does. Business data is generally transactional in nature and what you want to do is if your transactional systems go down, you want to have a snapshot of where you were just before it went down, as close to just before it went down as you possibly can. And there's some of that in what we do. There's some of, you know, if you have a website that some of your digital collections are powering and the website goes down or the server crashes, you want to be able to get that back. But more importantly than that, the the curatorial responsibility to keep the digital content that we have is sort of the first, what what I would argue is the first principle beyond keeping a manifest and keeping track of what's inside the files, which is, you know, if I can borrow from uh, some colleagues, lots of copies keep stuff safe. It's a truism, and it's a truism far beyond digital copies. Lots of copies of a book keeps the contents of the book more safe. Lots of copies of a, 
of a file keeps the copies more safe. So in a curatorial setting, rather than backups, we should talk about additional copies. And in a business setting, when this is transactional data, if it's something that's being, um, that hasn't sort of changed curatorial control, it's then that we talk about backups. And what backups keep safe is a business process, whereas what curatorial, what additional co copies keeps safe is the stuff itself regardless of what you're doing to process it. At the Library of Congress with these this newspaper data, we have, at, at any given time, we may have as many as six or seven copies, depending on what we're doing with it. When it arrives here, we have one copy on a hard drive, but the very first thing that's done is we make a copy on our server here. So now we have two copies, but we don't now immediately send the hard drive back. We process it because we, we only have one, one copy in our possession. We do a quality review, and once the quality review has passed and we say, yeah, we definitely want to keep this, then we make two more copies and put them on tape, and then we keep a copy on spinning disk while we're continuing to process it, and then we send the hard drive back because now we have three copies of it ourselves. Those tape copies, which we sort of, we tend to, playing a little bit fast and loose, we call them backups, but they're not really backups. They're just more copies. They're, they're not different from the thing that we're using. That's the other thing that's interesting about a backup is generally backups are a snapshot of a, of a previous moment, whereas these additional copies for us are, have a 100% fidelity. There's no, so if we, if we lose our work at this point and we bring back the backup, we have not lost any work. It's exactly the same as the thing that we were working on. The relationship that you, the question you asked in the, in the beginning is data wrangling versus um, versus backups. I would say the importance of keeping additional copies increases with the importance of maintaining curatorial control. At the point at which something becomes curatorially important, then additional copies are important. Before the point or something is curatorially important, it is less so. The reason that it's okay that when a hard drive arrives at our door, there's only one copy here, is that the curatorial control is still with a the partner. They have additional copies. It's their job. And the reason that it's important for us to say when we've made our additional copies is that in some meaningful sense, we allow the relinquishment of curatorial control if people want to. Now, happily, at this stage, what usually happens is that this is just a multiplication. It's a cell division. It's not a, it's not a full transition. So th this content, in, in some meaningful sense, is even safer because Kentucky has a copy of it, Library of Congress has a copy of it, and in some cases, um, you know, some other partners that Kentucky's working with may also have copies of it. So I I in that sense, the, the process itself as a partnership improves the sense of multiple copies rather than simply being in a business you would expect that sort of transition to happen and the you know the previous copy to be destroyed or something like that whereas here it really is a uh, it's just making another copy people handle this in a lot of different ways and it depends we were talking before the session started about how the level of technical support that various institutions have is is, is there's a huge range so in, in some cases i know there are awardees who do treat this very much like their business data. It's plugged into a server that's automatically backed up the same way that their email is backed up. You know, that might be a tape system or it might be even a commercial service, but they have a backup that they trust for their email, for their NDNP data, for their um, documents, maybe their, um, here at the Library of Congress, we have a, a, our desktops are backed up remotely. As a matter of course, we don't have to do anything if our desktop computer crashes, they can replace it with another one and bring the data back from, from the server where it's been backed up. And that process is sufficient to make another copy, particularly when it's in processing. Um, but I've also seen uh, on, on the other end of that spectrum with awardees who have very little technical support who make the very wise decision to simply purchase an extra hard drive. Ideally, they're purchasing an extra hard drive that that isn't necessarily identical with the, with the primary hard drive. And they make an exact copy, and after making an exact copy, they verify that the copy has been made with fidelity. I, wor I work on other projects here at the Library of Congress other than 
newspapers, and I will say that with the newspapers, the number of times that we check that a copy has been successful in terms of checking the manifest is exactly the same as the number of times we make a copy. We do not ever make a copy without subsequently checking the files that were copied against the manifest. This is a habit that has been very difficult to inculcate in this community of practice, but I've defi I'm definitely a convert, right? I've been converted by other people who were doing it and pointed out the wisdom to me. And with the zeal of the converted, I, I have, uh, I've promoted that habit as well. The way that we do it here is with the Bagot specification. So it's very, very simple manifest. It just has file name, checksum, file name, checksum, file name, checksum. And we go through all of that. We do the checksums on the files that have been copied. We make sure they match the manifest. Obviously, the NDNP batches have the same functionality, and you can do this with the DVB. You can just check that this batch is still still verifies against the checksums that were in the in the file originally. The other advantage uh, with the NDNP batches is that they are digitally signed, which the the Bagot bags are not. Um, so it really is, even though it's a ten-year-old standard, it still has some functionality that that um, that I'd like to see more widely adopted. Mm -hmm.